This is problem number two for section number 2.6. It says find the limit of the rational function as x approaches infinity and also as x approaches negative infinity. And they give you this rational function here. Now we're going to use this limit that we just figured out in the first problem which is the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x being 0. We're going to use that to advantage in almost every problem we use or we do. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at, it's usually going to be the highest power. And we usually look for the highest power in the denominator to do this. So the highest power in the denominator is x to the third. So we're going to multiply 1 over x cubed to the top and 1 over x cubed to the bottom. And we're looking to essentially get 1 over x or 1 over x squared so we can say that those uh, values are zero. And notice I'm not actually changing anything because 1 over x cubed divided by 1 over x cubed, that's just 1. So I'm not actually changing the expression. So I'm going to get the limit as x approaches infinity of when I multiply that, that'll be 1 over x squared plus 20 over x cubed all over when I multiply by 1 over x cubed times this, I get 1. And this will be plus 3 over x cubed. So now you'll notice when I have the limit as x approaches infinity for just this piece, remember I can kind of split this between each piece of this rational function. But when I do the limit as x approaches infinity for this piece, I'm going to get 0 because of our... Uh, definition that we came up with in the first problem. Same thing here, 20 over x cubed. If I put in a really large number, I'm approaching 0 as well, so plus 0. And that's all over 1 plus, again, I get 0 here. So I end up with 0 over 1, which is 0. So the limit as x approaches infinity for this rational is 0. So what's the limit as x approaches negative infinity? Well, that's not going to change anything if I do if I just use what I've <clears throat> already simplified a little bit here and plug in negative infinity. Well, we saw earlier that when you plug in negative infinity, right, that's not going to change anything. You're still going to approach zero for these one over x values. So we're still going to get zero plus zero over one plus zero, which means we're going to get zero over one, which is zero. So either way, whether you go towards infinity or negative infinity for this problem, you're getting zero for the, for the limits.